Alrighty, next game up here is the Ravens and the Lions, folks. And man, oh man, give credit to Dan Campbell. Always competitive. They were down, what, like 16 nothing at one point in this game. And they make it a game. They take the lead. And then a miraculous, never happened before play in the league happens. And the Lions lose. So, I honestly feel so bad for Dan Campbell. And who thought we would be saying that, folks? I mean, man, oh man, Dan Campbell loses on a 66 record-setting yard field goal attempt that bounced uh, straight up in the air off the crossbar and then decided to actually go in. So, wild, wild, wild. I'm sure y'all have seen the kick by now. We'll watch it again here um, at the end when we talk about this game. But, whew, man, oh, man, Dan Campbell. Got to give Dan Campbell credit, folks. And now, heading into next week, when the Lions, I'm sure, will be down like, you know, uh, eight-point underdogs, nine-point underdogs, potential ten-point underdogs in the spread, I think we have confidence now to take those points, and now that's going to be great value because Dan Campbell has no quit, and it's infectious, and it seems like everybody is buying into Dan Campbell, and that's what we were nervous about going into this season. Were people going to buy into Dan Campbell? He's not kind of, you know, a classic head coach right here you know kind of a little bit of a you know beef head muscle head whatever you want to call it I'm not saying that as a knock that's just you know his personality and that's fine I've got no problem with it it's something like we said you need it on your team I just don't think it's at the head coaching position tight ends coach fantastic uh, defensive coordinator fantastic defensive assistant fantastic that's truly where they fit in special teams exactly that's where they fit in just don't think it's going to make a great head coach look at Robert Sala with that Jets team a little floundering not competitive didn't they just put up zero points in like uh, back to back games what did the Jets put up zero points this week? What did the Jets uh, do in week two? How many points did they put up in week two? Uh, Jets put up uh, six points. So they put up six points over the last two games with the Lions kind of getting blown out in the last two games, come back and make it a close game, like serviceable game in the kind of, you know, in the in the final score. So, well, you know, Robert Sala, Dan Campbell, two basically kind of the same guys, muscle head, juice head kind of head coaches out here. But Dan Campbell, people are buying into him. So well done by Dan Campbell winning over the locker room. Truly everybody buying in. They're getting down big. They're getting down bad. They don't care. They don't quit. They they, stop, they don't stop fighting. They keep on pounding. Isn't that Detroit keep pounding? I mean, that's Dan Campbell to a T, and they're all buying in. So huge, huge credit to him. Now let's see if we can get a win and start building upon that. But so far, man, oh, man, Dan Campbell's doing a great job here by Detroit. People need to start giving him a lot more credit, um, and we will start be doing that as well. All right, so let's talk about this Lions team. I mean, got down big, got down bad. They couldn't move the ball. I mean, these are their first drive. Six plays, 23 yards, punt. Three and out, drive number two. Four plays, 23 yards, they have to punt. Uh, three and out, drive number four there. Drive number five, five plays, 10 yards. Drive number six, three and out. Last drive right before half, five plays, 34 yards. Unfortunately, can't do anything with this. So down 10 nothing, going into halftime. Then down 13 nothing, and then they finally score, making it 13-7. And then the second drive out of halftime, they score another touchdown. And then their third drive, they only had three drives in the second half, and they scored on every single one of them. I mean, folks, look at these some of these drives right here. First drive out of halftime, 11 plays, 75 yards, eating up seven minutes on the clock. Second drive out of halftime, 12 plays, 47 yards, seven minutes and 25 seconds, eating that up off the clock. So once again, everybody reconvening for halftime. Dan Campbell's halftime speech gets everybody fired up, and they come out and score every single drive out of halftime get the lead and then we all know what happens after that so man oh man Dan Campbell I think I underestimated that man to the max to the max I may have to officially apologize to the man this man comes out next week who do they got next week another tough opponent Let's quickly see. Lions next week. Who do we got? Because next week I may officially apologize to Dan Campbell. Uh, but next week the Lions. What do we got here? The Lions got the Bears. Now, they should win that game. That is a definite winnable game. And I'm telling you right now, if Dan Campbell can go, I believe it's in Chicago. If they go into Chicago and beat the Bears, I will officially formally apologize to Dan Campbell for kind of underestimating him in the offseason. But, man, oh, man, I can't say enough great things out of Dan Campbell so far. And that's a 180 of what we've been seeing and saying all offseason. So, credit to that, man. 
All right, Jared Goff goes 22 of 30 for 217 yards. No touchdown, no interception, clean game there. Decently efficient. Let's get the completion percentage up. Uh, 73% on 217 yards. Once again, just solid right there. Always in it and getting it done and doing it when they needed to. So uh, Ravens never closed out this game. Marquise Hollywood Brown had multiple opportunities to kind of close out this game, being wide open down the field, but he's trash, can't rain in the ball. And we're going to watch all those drops in our Wednesday film study here. But Ravens kept the door open. And wasn't that was our kind of entire motto for week two. Teams leaving the door open. And we saw it again here this week. Y'all have to shut the door on these teams. If you leave the door open, the teams will come through. The Lions, the Lions came through that left open door here by the Ravens, folks. That should tell you everything you need to know. Any team will take a wide open door if you y'all leave that door open Lions are no different and they basically had the win should have had the win that uh, definitely uh, uh, delay of game on the play before definitely was a delay of game they don't call it unfortunate and uh, they kicked the 66 yard game winning field goal how crazy uh, but Jared Goff, solid game out there. DeAndre Swift, 14 carries, 47 yards. He rushed for a touchdown. Jamal Williams, 12 carries, 42 yards. He rushed for a touchdown. So running back by committee here. Love that. Want to see more of that. And this is what the Lions should be doing. 30 passing attempts by Jared Goff. Maybe slightly too much. Maybe limited to 25 to 28. But still, solid. That's what we're looking for. And then 14 carries by Swift. 12 carries by Jamal Williams. 26 carries overall by the running game. That's exactly what we want to see balance run pass game and uh, Dan Campbell's got this team working I'm loving it all right let's see who Jared Goff was throwing the ball to leading receiver here Khalif Raymond six receptions for 68 yards DeAndre Swift, seven care, uh, seven receptions for 60 yards. Darren Fowles, two receptions, 35 yards. Jamal Williams, two receptions, 25 yards. TJ Hawkinson, two receptions, 10 yards. So decently spreading the wealth between all of the weapons. We love seeing that. Um, and the Lions, like we said, put up 17 points, only lose by two, 19 to 17. All righty, now let's talk about the Ravens. Let's start here with Lamar Jackson in a really, really big, not great passing performance. A lot of drops here by the wide receivers, but he goes 16 of 31, folks. That's only 51% completion percentage. Not good. He had 287 passing yards, though, on 16 completions. That's fantastic. Absolutely. One touchdown, one interception, unfortunately. Let's see where this interception comes from. Interception comes in the fourth quarter, and the Lions take advantage and go down and take the go-ahead field goal with a minute and eight seconds left. Unfortunate, you just leave a little bit too much time for Lamar Jackson. There's quarterbacks that you can just leave absolutely no time for. Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady. Those are the three truly established ones, but given what Lamar Jackson can do in the dual threat game, you really can put Lamar Jackson in that category as well. Just unfortunately left him a little bit too much time and folks yes I understand the delay of game should have been called I get it I would have thrown the flag I watched this game live I saw it and I was like yeah that's a flag and then when they uh they let like another extra second and a half tick off of that play clock and I'm like we're at like negative a second and a half I'm like y'all are really not throwing this flag now how crazy it's like Lamar Jackson didn't even notice and that's why it could have just been a missynchronization between the broadcast and the game clock because Lamar Jackson didn't even seem urgent so did Lamar Jackson just not see the play clock or was the synchronization of the play clock between the broadcast and on the field a little off so I, I'm sure we'll know more information as this week continues because that's definitely going to be a big story it already is but we'll keep an eye on that uh, so they go and kick the 66 yard field goal let's just watch it because it's absolutely insane <laughs> it's just absolutely insane here we go uh, 66 yarder folks I mean folks y'all know the record the record was what 63 yards so, the longest field goal in history was 63 yards, and this man broke it by three yards. That's crazy. It wasn't a one-yard break or a two-yard break. It was a full three-yard break right there. That's stunting. You're going to break a record that hasn't been broken. I think that record was set, um, what, in the 70s? Let me see if I can get that up quickly right here. Quickly. Longest field goal in NFL history. I know what it is now. Um, but I want to know, uh, number two, number two, 64 yards. So he broke it by two yards right there. Absolutely fantastic. That's a big old stunt right there to break it by two yards, but man, oh man, well done there. 
By who, who? Justin Tuck, correct? This is the man that did it. Justin Tuck, the kicker for the Ravens. Let's get his name up. I'm almost certain it's Justin Tucker. Let's, uh, yeah, Justin Tucker. So well done by breaking it. Um, just a big old leg and then, you know, the help from the crossbar. Uh, we may watch this in the film study as well on Wednesday just because uh, they showed Harbaugh's reaction to it. And it's one of the most priceless things. Uh, John Harbaugh didn't even think it was going to go in. He literally looked to one of his assistant coaches and just was like, just staring at him, kind of shaking his head. And the assistant coach was like, hey, it happened. And just John Harbaugh in absolute shock the entire time. Um, didn't he, he didn't really think it was going to hit, but it did. So, And, you know, breaking a record, you don't think it's going to hit. 66 has never been done before. Why is it going to be different this time? But in the Dome, in Ford Field, it happens. So, unfortunate the line's on the short end of the stick this time. Unfortunate. Truly unfortunate. Given everything, I mean, this is truly heartbreaking for Dan Campbell. But I know Dan Campbell will find a way to, uh, you know, turn this into a positive and get this team, you know, chomping at the bit uh to write they're about to bite people i think some lines players are really going to just be biting some of the bears players next week because they're going to get caught up in the energy that dan gamble's going to provide uh there might be some bites and uh, some ejections because players are going to be biting people <laughs> next week all right but let's finish off this ravens team here we go Lamar Jackson leading rusher, seven carries for 58 yards. Latavius Murray, seven carries for 28 yards. Tyson Williams, five carries for 22 yards. Devontae Freeman, three carries for eight yards. So truly utilizing a running back by committee approach right here. Uh, three running backs getting into the mix, and they're using all of them, like we saw last season. Um, so solid there. Let's see who uh, Lamar Jackson was throwing to. Mark Andrews, leading receiver at the tight end position. Five receptions, 109 yards. Fantastic. Sammy Watkins, four receptions, 68 yards. Marquise Brown, three receptions, 53 yards on seven targets. Should have had, you know, uh, five, six receptions for like 200 yards, honestly. 150 yards at least so gotta get Marquise Brown better at catching the ball and not just bringing it into his body going out and catching the ball you know these shorter receivers they always use kind of their speed to get wide open but they have to catch the ball when they're wide open and that's why we highly praise Tyreek Hill shorter wide receiver but will go up and catch it with his hands when we saw Marquise Brown last night he was trying to catch everything into his body you can't do that it's going to get broken up or you're not going to be able to catch it because it's going to bounce off of you um so Marquise Brown shorter wide receiver that's why we don't disrespect Tyreek Hill give Tyreek Hill his credit folks he will never do anything like this what are you talking about dropping two back-to-back -back wide open touchdowns he doesn't do that so Marquise Brown man gotta catch the ball damn damn so, Ravens get away with one, and how crazy, Lamar Jackson, uh, are, uh, you know, you want to get conspiratorial out here, NFL conspiracy theory, they want Lamar Jackson to win, because, you know, week one, it goes into overtime, Lamar Jackson fumbles the ball, you think the game would be over, and, uh, well, it was over, they did lose because of that, but, you know, well, once again, they could have won that game, game one, but Lamar Jackson fumbles in overtime, how unfortunate. Then game number two, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire fumbles, you know, it, when the Chiefs are going on the game-winning drive, then the Ravens win and now the Ravens win here on a 66 yard game winning field goal where they don't call the delay of game to play before so maybe it seems like the NFL was like hey Lamar Jackson lost game one but we need him to win this season so let's, uh, let's do some things the Buffalo Wild Wings commercials where they say go into overtime they hit the button and then something crazy happens on the field so if you want to get conspiratorial, I don't believe in that, but yeah, that could be maybe something. So <laughs> we'll see. Uh, Lamar Jackson is going to win like every game close in new fashion. <laughs> maybe. So truly unfortunate there by the lines. Ravens get the win 19 to 17. 